Hey everybody, Stephanie here with the Machine Gun Nest with today's legal update. So if you're a sub and you, you watch a lot of our videos, you know we do a lot of these and you know we try to focus on really important content. But what we're gonna share today is something that actually is now codified into law and really, really important. And so I really want everybody to listen up. So HB 2471 has passed the Senate and it is now signed into law by President Biden. I'm talking about the $1.5 trillion deal, this giant omnibus package that has just been passed. What does that have to do with the Second Amendment? What does that have to do with us? Well, as you know, a lot of these bills are thousands of pages long. This bill in totality is 2,741 pages long. And on page 2,207 is in included this, this act called the Violence Against Women's Act. Now, let me tell you why this is dangerous and pure trash. So the Violence Against Women's Act has been uh, cycled around. We've seen this a few times. It actually was first brought into law in the early 90s under the Clinton administration. And it has come and gone and come and gone. And each new iteration of it has seen some changes. But the changes that have been enacted and snuck in under this omnibus law are actually uh, pretty terrifying if you're a, a Second Amendment advocate. So what's going on here? So it has two major changes to the current law. The first is entitled the Nix Denial Notification Act of 2022. So essentially this act requires that there be a criminal investigation for every Nix denial. So what is Nix? Nix stands for National Instant Criminal Background Check System. So when you come into a shop like ours to purchase a firearm, this is basically us tapping into this FBI federal database to make sure that you are not a felon and that you can indeed proceed with your firearms purchase. Now the problem with this is, like any federally maintained database, it contains a lot of errors. And so what they're saying is that if it comes back with any type of denial that it would require some kind of criminal investigation. Now, if you have a really common name like John Smith or Muhammad or anything like that, that's a really common name and there's somebody else in that database that might have a similar name to you and you get denied, they're going to launch an official criminal investigation into you. They're essentially declaring you guilty until you can be proven innocent and removing your ability to participate in your God-given Second Amendment right. So it's pretty scary because um, the system will confuse you for somebody else entirely and get you wrapped up into somebody else's legal mess. And this is just not okay. Imagine this situation transposed to any other amendment in the Bill of Rights. Imagine having to apply for some type of specialized permit to make a tweet or imagine having to pay for that right and them saying, oh, you know what, your name, your name is John Smith and John Smith said some things we don't like and so now we're going to launch an criminal investigation into you before you're allowed to say anything. That's essentially what's happening here and it's so not okay. So we know, according to Gun Owners of America, that 99% of the denials through the NICS check system are false positives. That means that the current system is horrifically broken and they're going to continue to punish good law-abiding citizens as a result. Now the second part of this that's really scary is that they are deputizing local and state level law enforcement agencies to actually go through and enact these criminal investigations into you. So this isn't just some kind of federal law. This is something that is trickling down no matter what on a state level. As you've seen, about 62% of counties in America are declared as Second Amendment sanctuary areas, but that's just going to be totally obliterated by this because this federal law is going to require your local law enforcement agency to investigate you as a criminal, even though it's probably, according to all statistics that we have, a verified false positive that you wouldn't be allowed to buy this firearm in the first place. So how did this happen? What's going on? How did this how did this backdoor gun control get thrown in? So remember, this is a 2700 page bill. 
nobody's reading that. They didn't read this bill. And 2,200 pages in, we had this tucked in. 18 Republican senators voted for this. I'm going to read you some of their names. Joni Ernst, Lisa Murkowski, John Barrasso, Roy Blunt, Shelley Capito, Susan Collins, John Cornyn, Lindsey Graham, Chuck Grassley, Cindy Hale-Smith, Mitch McConnell, Jerry Moran, Robert Portman, Richard Shelby, John Thune, Tommy Tuberville, Roger Wicker, and Todd Young. So those are their names, and I'm a big believer in name and shame. So if you see their names scrolling here next to me, you call them up and express your extreme disappointment that these Republican senators are not standing up for your Second Amendment rights. We'll let you know as more of this develops.